Stephen Curry's 11 triple clinic featured an all-time efficient first half and something chefs never done. Jonathan Kaminga's officially broken out into an all-star caliber player is setting records in a perfect complement to Draymond Green in the front court. Steve Kerr found a funky five-man lineup that obliterated the Pacers on both ends. Having put to bed playoff teams on consecutive nights, another battle against the top six seed ensues Saturday at Chase, but for a roller coaster game under 500 2024 Warrior squad, winning five of their last six games all by double digits has yet again maxed out their team vibes. And it'll be an uphill battle to get back to contender status, but the Bay Area's hopes in 2024 are still very much alive. Curry's first half against the Pacers was incomprehensible, as his 29 points in the first 24 minutes were produced on a ridiculous 126% true shooting. Steph joined New York's Jalen Brunson, who scored 35 in Phoenix during the final 24 in December, as one of two players in NBA history to score 29 plus points on at least 120% true shooting in a single half. And showing you how much better Curry is of a three-point shooter than anyone else in the history of the NBA, his 42 games with at least 9 three-pointers are a full 29 more than the second-ranked Damian Lillard. Better yet, Steph's 79 games with at least 8 three-pointers made are a full 40 more than the second-ranked Dame. Reason I bring that up is because it's the amount of games where Curry's gone off from deep, which make this next fact increasingly insane. Against Indiana on Thursday night, it was Curry's first game ever where he made the first 7 three-pointers he attempted. On the verge of 36 with an NBA 14th most combined games between the regular season and playoffs, witnessing Curry's prolonged mental and physical fortitude to dominate like he just did should be savored given we'll likely never see deep range sniping like this ever again once he retires. In the all-star hosting city of Indianapolis, foreshadowing what will be a revolutionary three-point contest one-on-one -on -one matchup with WNBA star Sabrina Unescu, Curry finished with 42 points and 11 threes on 91% true shooting. Steph's now tied for the fourth most 40-point games this season with five of them, but more notably, I want you to take in how the top 10 ranked players in 40 pieces in 23-24 are all at least six years younger than Curry painting the picture of an elite defiance of father time that deserves its fair share of praise. When this man's flowing into jumpers with elite footwork and a smooth follow through, you can throw the entire kitchen sink at him, but he's not going to be phased. As whether it was using patented Steve Kerr offense split actions, Maryland, as he checks in, Steph another three! Or just generally finding space without the need for a dribble, he was casually draining 30 foot spot ups early and often. Curry launches and hits. However, it was off the dribble that displayed one of Steph's most bewildering deep range bombs of all time, as just in front of the Pacer half court logo, a quadruple hezzy tween combo leading directly into a pull up with both Shepard and Smith smothering him shows us why he's revolutionized basketball. Oh, come on. Six for six. And the man is rightfully hyped as hell afterwards. Hell of a shot. Just like Curry's deep range finesse, the Warriors' defense was also at a championship level against Indiana. Holding the Pacers to just six points for the final six minutes of the third, Steve Kerr definitely found something with a five-man unit of Pods, Kinyonis, JK, Guy, and Saric, as he stuck with that unit into the fourth, where they continued to dominate. This lineup's ball movement, poise, and ability to play fast in transition, make swift backside rotations while being switchable one through five defensively, both locked up on D and executed consistently on O, against the playoff contending Pacers. On the second night of a back-to-back, -back, after taking care of Philly the night earlier, this unpredictably thrilling Brandon Lester, Santos, Kaminga, Dario unit allowed the Dubs aging main core to keep their legs fresh, with Clay out for the game as a whole due to an illness. While Curry, Green, and Wiggs did check back in momentarily in the fourth quarter, those two and the rest of the vets getting valuable rest down the stretch serves the Dubs well in terms of stamina entering their next matchup. Even after the Dubs took wins over two Eastern Conference playoff squads, one of which was a five seed in the Sixers, now they're tasked with the challenge of another five seed in a KD, D-Book, and Brad Beal Phoenix attack. Credit Kerr for finding that elite lineup though, as well as subbing in TJD for the final few minutes as Jackson Davis got to play in his hometown. In terms of Steph's potential three-point record, 
Kerr would smartly value health at all costs by subbing Curry out for Quinones with just over three minutes left and the game out of reach. Regarding the Warriors' Brazilian phenom, stop calling him LA Chargers wide receiver Puka Nakua and start calling him Gui Santos, as despite being an undersized 6'6 in Draymond Green-esque fashion, Guilherme Cavallo de Santos's old-school big man post-up rebounding and finishing, combined with modern-day big man passing and deep-range shooting, nicely mesh with the Warriors' pace and Steve Kerr's small ball playing style. He has the quickness to defend any position and plays with the maximum amount of hustle when he's given minutes, so he could be a more utilized option for the coaching staff going forward. Santos dropped a Warrior team high off the bench of 13 against the Pacers, leading the beastly down the stretch unit next to Gee that sealed the Dubs' victory in Indiana was Jonathan Kaminga, who continued a torching hot stretch of bucket getting, and his in-season development has been pretty wild because reports early in the year signaled the Warriors were reaching a breaking point with JK, however scoring 20 plus points on 50 plus percent shooting from the field in 8 straight games and having now posted at least 10 points in 29 consecutive games has significantly upgraded Jonathan's value. At yesterday's trade deadline, rookie GM Mike Dunleavy stated Kaminga was as untouchable as it gets in the NBA, and that has everything to do with his recent play. JK's two-way cheetah-esque ground coverage mixed with soft touch shooting and guard skill are terrifyingly improved weapons, when you also factor in he's one of if not the most athletic jumpers in basketball. So this man's development is unlocking new doors for the Warriors in terms of their 2024 upside. Kaminga's chemistry with Draymond Green in the front court has been a balanced small ball connection, as Jonathan's able to receive post entries from Green swiftly, cut back door, and properly utilize Dre's passing ability by being a springy weapon in the dunker spot. Following a win in Philadelphia, a Clay Thompson birthday celly on the plane ride to Indianapolis, then a W against Tyrese Pascal and the Pacers, and the Dubs chemistry is peaking at just the right time. For Clay Thompson, the just turned 34 year old recently owning up to the media regarding the rough season it's been for him is a good sign in terms of both Thompson taking a step back and Kerr being comfortable with taking away his minutes when need be. Because as harsh as that sounds and as big of a KT fan as I am, Quite frankly, with Kaminga breaking out, Pajemski being an efficient, low-turnover, high-defensive IQ option, Wiggins being all-around more productive than Clay right now, plus Moody and Quinones having more spring to their step than him as well, for Clay, there's a ton of internal competition on the wing right now, so the four-time champion accepting a lesser role at times will be key for him. Anything is possible when Kerr has a good coaching game, but can the dubs get back to contender status in your opinion? Let me know down below, DFlow signing off.